Hi, this is Peter, and I'll be running you through how to hand paint a metal texture. So first things first, you go create a new file, 2048 by 2048, 300 pixels per inch. And I've just filled it with a dark blue color, and I'm using a hard round brush to create some polygonal shapes on the background. So we can do this all in one layer. We're just trying to create some interesting geometric uh, rectangles here. So what you just saw me do was I went up to filter offset and offset it by 1024 pixels because this way you can see all the seams that will occur when you go to tile the texture and you can use you, uh, just use your brush to fix them now at these very early stages so you know all your pieces are, will fit together well. So I'm imagining this is some sort of rougher metal. Um, I can go more in depth about that later. but. The, I'm imagining this metal plating is this metal plating is just kind of cobbled together um, and I'm adding some cracks and things to add points of interest but in general you don't want any one detail to stick out too much otherwise you'll notice it when it repeats so from here uh, the next step would be to select a, uh, a dark color from the background and add shadows to the edges of the metal to, uh, to show some sense of depth so they're not uh, wafer thin. These are, these are kind of thick pieces of metal and the shadows, uh, light won't be able to get into the cracks there. So you want to show some shadow. And from there, we just kind of, I keep flipping it back and forth between the different um, offsets just to, to make sure it's seamless. Um, and that's something I'll do throughout this. So from here, you use a smaller brush to create random patterns and just distress the surface a little bit because um, we want to make it a little bit interesting. And you could use a texture brush for this, but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I just want to show you that um, by layering brush strokes on top of brush strokes, you can create something interesting just with the basic hard round brush. So from here, you're going to add hard highlights to the edges with a smaller brush and just keep. Uh, it doesn't have to be pure white. For example, like this looks pretty bright, but it's definitely not a pure white color. It's more of a purplish blue. Now, um, basically, I'm just outlining that. So the hard edges of metal, uh, the light will reflect off them quite a bit. So what you see me doing here is just defining some, some of the divots and bringing out details on the surface of the metal. So I have all these random shapes that I've created. And 
I want to, to make some sense of them so it doesn't look as uh, chaotic and unintentional as it uh, first appears. So I want to say, oh, you know, like this little curve here could be, uh, maybe that was a dent. Somebody hammered it in there and um, it, it's supposed to be there. It's not just a blurry breaststroke that I forgot about. So um, we call this like, you're working the painting. You're, um, you're continuously giving your lines purpose and reason. And here, I'm just imagining that those uh, those little bars on top, they're riveted to the, the plates of metal underneath them. So um, I'll go to get to the rivets later, but I'm just generally trying to uh, make it feel like it's connected. Uh, do a little bit of designing there and say, oh, it's not just welded or slapped on top of each other. There's no, uh, there's no super glue. It's, <laughs> it's actually connected together by other pieces. So um, what you'll see me doing now is just really kind of working the piece a little bit. I'm saying, eh, I, I want some more scratches here. I want some more, a uh, little bit more detail and make sure that the highlights are contrasted with all those dark parts. So you'll see the um, anywhere where there's a really dark section, uh, right next to it there will be uh, a really bright section because just in general when the light bounces off it's going to create a big highlight but then there's oh well, I could go into <laughs> I could go into theory about light and dark um, and how how that all reflects that maybe that'll be another video but um, yeah just just know that you want to put those next to each other so I keep flipping it here and Eventually, I'll want to uh, smooth out some of these little dots, but I'm just kind of filling them out and giving some sense of uh, some sense of detail. Like that's where that's where scratches would have been. And I apologize for the the camera going all over the place from here on out, but I'll be zooming in and looking at um, lots of detail instead of uh, the broader picture. So. I'll be painting some highlights and shadows on the rivets. Same thing here. One side's light, one side's dark. Make sure your light sources are always consistent so things don't look kind of wonky. And you want to continue refining your hard edges and painting in detail. So this is the, the brunt of it. Um, I don't have too much other instruction from this point out, so I'll just kind of talk about what I'm doing here. Um, so once you've got your flat colors in, you want to, to add some sort of gradient to it. So with my brush, I'm painting in some, some lighter sections and then kind of blending them with the darker. So it feels a little bit more shiny. And <laughs> you'll see me fixing a lot of mistakes here because I'm realizing, oh, you know, there's, there's way too much space in between this piece of metal and that piece of metal. So I want to, to kind of shift it over, make it a little closer. Um, because plus you have to think about what is underneath these big pieces. Is it another layer of metal? Is it, um, is there some sort of stone or something that it's nailed to? Um, so the less of that, uh, the more you focus on the metal, the less you have to paint underneath it. But I should mention that this is, um, so I'm, I'm looking at some metal references and, and thinking of this as like a, maybe there's orcish, it's like an orcish plate, um, uh, plate armor or something. It's very scrappy. It's, uh, maybe a little bit bloody and rusty. Um, but I heavily referenced a texture by Jessica Din, I think is how you say her name. She, uh, she had done some really cool textures that, um, I wanted to do this breakdown of. So. I thought, all right, um, you you can see her her version on the uh, the reference sheet that I keep going back to, and that's one thing that's really important to realize that textures are textures are not using or you sorry references using references is not a bad thing because um, yeah it's really cool to say you could do it from your head like you could draw this or that from your head but um, in the professional world people don't care as much about oh was this purely from your imagination 
versus was this accurate? Is this actually how metal looks like? And I think that's that's a really important distinction because you want to make sure your details are all accurate. And you'll there's definitely going to come a point where you, you just overlook something like, oh, you know, metal is shinier at this part, or this is how it would reflect exactly. Um, and that goes for all sorts of drawings and paintings. But here I'm just noticing, um, I'm painting in like these little dots because I'm thinking uh, maybe the metal has sort of eroded over time. Like it's it's been rained on, it's been, uh, it's been through different fights, scratches, uh, it's been scratched and dinged and um, those little, the, the motions I'm making with my brush are kind of circular, especially when I'm distressing it on the surface. I'm, they're, they're somewhat chaotic and random, but um, you also just want to zoom back out and make sure you have a pretty good dispersion of them. So I have, uh, that's why I keep, <laughs> I keep zooming out and then zooming in. Because when you start a piece, it's really important to, um, it's really important to paint as broadly as possible. So you have this, um, you start with the biggest brush that you can, you, um, you kind of work your way from the outside in. So if, even though, um, it's really tempting to jump into details, it's really tempting just to get in there and, uh, draw lots of little lines and all that you want to work with your general form and your values first and so so uh, at this stage I'm I'm definitely zooming in more um, starting to refine those details but you can see even the highlights are kind of they're kind of rough they're jagged I don't think uh, total time here I spent I probably spent what uh, like two and a half hours actually painting um and trying to figure out how it's going to talk about this but i think in general like you want to spend most of your time like the the detailing is the easy part you want to spend most of your time trying to to block in stuff and trying to um get the the general gist of your shapes and your um get your contrast and your coloring right like the the little detailing and refining stages, it's tedious, but it's um everything's figured out for you by that point. So just refining some of those uh, those rivets again, and you can see where I add the gradient on that that strip of metal, just to make it uh, seem a little bit more reflective. Again, you want to look at your references for that. Um, but another thing that you might notice as I'm, I'm drawing some lines around these, but uh, for the purposes of this anyways, I'm trying to stay away from it being just a, a line drawing. So it's um, line, line is useful, definitely, but um, in real life, and I know this isn't like a hyper-realistic painting or anything, but in real life you have, um, there's no line. Things don't have an, a nice cartoony outline. So when we're painting, we want the outline to be more of a resembling occlusion shadows. So uh, the shadow that appears when something is touching or really close to another object. So um, they're not cast shadows, which are um, like think when the sun is in front of you, you cast a shadow behind you. The occlusion shadows are, are a little bit different. They're the ones that are closer. So these lines, like that, there I just drew a line in that crack. And it's not because I want to outline it, it's because I want to have that darkest, that darkest spot. And again, just refining, refine, refine, refine. But by, by now everything is figured out. So I have my shapes, I know they tile well, and I'm just trying to s zoom out and say, you know, that that rectangle there really needed a, a crack because it was it was kind of lame without it. Um, it feel, felt like it was missing something. Or um, I noticed that edge was too bright, so I wanted to uh, take some of the darker color and um, introduce the darker color to that area. So 
kind of blending these spaces together because in the end um, I want this to be it's a, it's a stylized texture is what it is but I want it to be uh, have some elements of of uh, realism anyways so this hard edge here I like it um, I like that that dark edge there but I I want the pieces to feel like they're all the the background and the the pieces of metal I want them to feel like they're in the same painting so um, I'm gonna have to darken that up a little bit here as I go and it's okay to have this imperfect these imperfect edges um, because one other thing you have to think about is how far away are people seeing this because if it's just like a, a repeating texture on the back side of a small orc then it's <laughs> like people aren't going to be looking at that super closely and like I mentioned I started this image with a 2048 by 2048 pixel uh, file size but the end file size might just be like 256 by 256 maybe 512 by 512 I don't know um, but that'll that depends on your project and whatnot so if you find um, like on this this uh, this piece of metal that I'm painting right now it's that occlusion shadow coming through and if you find that um, there's a little cool uh, distress mark a little a cool scratch or here or there um, feel free to take a hard round brush and just kind of de define it a little bit more don't make it look so accidental but um, we layered so many brush strokes on top of each other so that you can have those sorts of happy accidents and some people uh, there's just different ways about going about the same things uh, some people swear by happy accidents they'll say oh you know this is um, sometimes you can come up with things that are way better than uh, controlled ideas whereas some people will say no I want to control every single brush stroke that I lay down um, as a, as the artist as the craftsman and to each their own but just uh, just kind of keeping on keeping on painting away here and I think the um, yeah if you did have a texture brush you f feel free to use it like I think it would help a lot with this and would probably speed up your process quite a bit um, and texture brushes aren't cheating they're just think of it like using a, a different brush in real life you want to use the tools that you have available to you um, but I think if you do it this way with hard round brushes it'll give you a good foundation um, and then here's a little note uh, recommending that uh, or reminding you to uh, blend the scenes together like there was a seam right there and offset your uh, your file so um, filter offset and then offset it by half your file size so and then if you want to get it back then repeat filter offset um, some people do this with uh, they flip they flip their files so you can flip it um, horizontally vertically um, usually not vertically <laughs> usually it's flipping it from left to right um, and you can see all the little mistakes so if you're painting the character you can say oh that looks kind of weird um, and it's you you really notice the mistakes you made like oh the the left eye is <laughs> lower than the right eye or the nose is kind of off it's it's pushed too far up and the same can be said of um, like environment textures like this you could you could flip it one way and then realize oh that's um, it everything's kind of skewed in one direction maybe I should change that um, so that that's one thing I could do to improve here I could say oh um, flip it horizontally um, because I don't think I did this throughout that um, and the amount of uh, painting that goes into this again it varies by the file size um, but you'll see me leave a lot of things pretty rough just because um, well one it's a demo but two it's um, you, when you zoom out it won't be relevant it's just uh, those details will 
get rasterized and blend into the background. Um, speaking of which, uh, fun fact, if you don't already know, you should <laughs> save your images in, as PNGs instead of JPEG because um, JPEG is um, like it's lost versus uh, lossless. So I think, did I get that right? Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But the um, basically, if you save it as a JPEG, it'll rasterize the image and it just, um, you'll lose pixels over time. Whereas with the PNG, well, one, it has, uh, it can preserve transparency, which is really awesome. But then you've also, um, it's just uh, better for preserving the pixels. So save as a PNG and you'll be good to go. The, I guess the one thing that could be said about JPEGs is that they're, they take up less memory, but it's not really gonna bite you in the butt unless you're dealing with hundreds of files and uh, then maybe it com might come back to you. But <laughs> I think uh, in general, you'll wanna, as artists, you'll wanna be using uh, PNGs. So here what I'm doing is Again, just refining, refine, refine, refine. And it's um, nothing too special here. And I think the um, it's tough because at a certain point, you have to be like, yeah, this is done. But um, I want to um, want to show exactly how far you can take this. So these hard edges here, these hard edges are going to be, um, you'll want to blend them together a little bit. So my issue here was I noticed that um, the edges are very flat. They feel, um, I, I, I drew them by hand, I didn't use the line tool, but it's still like, it feels very mechanical. Um, and I want to break that up a little bit because with the whole theme of this is they're not perfect, perfect bars in the middle. They're not perfect, uh, cuts. They've been tossed around. Um, they're crudely made. And that's one thing you want to think about. What's the story behind this? I know it doesn't say, it doesn't have a story like, uh, it doesn't have a story like an, a character or a city or anything might, but it still tells a story with the way, the way it's made. And you can kind of hypothesize about who made it. So that's Again, that's my backstory. This was made by orcs. This was, um, it's kind of whacked together. And um, here I see, uh, I decided that's gonna be metal underneath. So I just kind of paint some, some shiny spots. Maybe some dirt's gotten under there and it's reflecting. Um, and just kind of trying to blend this together here. But yeah, made by orcs, kind of rough. It's, um, Maybe you could go real far with your story and think, oh, every single scratch has a, a story. So maybe these little divots here, um, you can kind of pretend, oh, this was this was where Grosh Nork the Orc <laughs> bashed his his goblin rival's head into the <laughs> the piece of metal. I don't know. <laughs> so there's that. That's why there's a ding right here. Or this is where they got attacked by uh, the Knights of Valor got cut right here so it can be kind of fun to play around with that stuff and spend some time alone in your head now uh, the one issue here was it was very flat in terms of color so uh, it's late but I'm introducing some color into the uh, the image a little bit of some reds and greens you just do that by creating a new layer with the color blend mode and notice it's it's mostly faded out but i think it's still important to have that that faint color distinction because um it's like a little easter egg for your eyes it's um it creates some sense of interest it, um even if you don't think oh that's that's green or that's blue um it makes it feel a little bit more natural and less artificial and flat um so uh the last steps were here was um, taking those colors and painting on top with uh, introducing them uh, purposefully. So taking a hard round brush and adding some dots throughout the image. Um, 
dots again because I'm thinking, oh, well, if it's red, maybe there are like little blood spots, um, little blemishes. And that could be similar to, uh, I think you'll see a lot of this as I go into uh, like painting rocks or painting skin, especially you'll see little divots and I decide not to detail that too much, but the um, you'll just see little little blemishes maybe on skin it could be warts or bumps or something but little imperfections in the skin but here there are little raised spots of metal little splashes of lead here and there and I'm trying to near that top section you see I paint a lot of them but then I, I want to blend it well because if you just put little spots all over then it looks like a Dalmatian it, it's kind of it's not supposed to have um, like birthmarks or anything, it's a piece of metal. Um, but you want to create that distress surface. So, again, I decide I hate those. Um, it was like, I wanted to refine some of that. And you have to think light. The light areas tend to be rays, and that's where the, the light is reflecting off of, and the dark areas tend to be a little bit more recessed and set into the design because um, that's where light can't get to and that'll all come with practice there's I might be able to create a tutorial specifically on lighting that might be fun but um, I think that's one thing that you get from painting and observing things and I added uh, I decided last minute to add <laughs> these uh, these big rivets um, because I felt like the pieces of metal were still still kind of floating like you wonder how are they all connected um, but this makes them feel very secure and bolted down I like how Jessica did it in her version she had these um, she had these these giant bolts um, sticking into whatever the background was and these are kind of messy uh, maybe they're the cracks around them show that they were forced in. They were, <laughs> they weren't, uh, they weren't neatly hammered in. They were, um, it's like taking a sledgehammer instead of like a, a little tinker's hammer. Um, and when I added that, um, I used white there. So it's uh, you want to use your white sparingly because most things in uh, nature, even aren't white. They're so when you do use white, it kind of um, blows things out. It blows out the color. So you want to use it very selectively for like these highlights uh, at the very end. So uh, I think that even that that lighter, light light blue purple color we were using for the the outlines and the highlights was working pretty well. Um, and now you just want to use that white to to add the final touches. But the um, the last things to do here as I'm finishing up this would be um, you always want to go through your image adjustments and kind of play around with a couple of things. It's the, the brightness contrast, the hue saturation, and um, maybe the levels just to get a, you might realize, oh, this looks much better if it's got some high contrast or this is too contrasting and I want to knock down the, the color balance or maybe instead of bluish metal I want some greenish metal. Yep, that's up to you. But anyways, let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought of this video and hopefully uh, hopefully, if you didn't feel like watching the whole thing you just checked out the beginning or if you have stuck through all the way till the end here then um, you got something out of it <laughs> but I'll be figuring out uh, what texture to do next week very soon here maybe going into a uh, grass or straw or something but I'm always open to suggestions and really just here to help you all learn and kind of refresh my own memory on these things so the last few steps here just defining a new pattern making sure it's tileable and there we go so I'll see you all next week and uh, happy painting